Ellison here of Eagle Dream Technologies and as an AWS Premier Consulting Partner, we are your guide to AWS reInvent 2020. reInvent is leveling up the conference experience this year with three weeks of content. It's virtual, it's free, over 50 content tracks and over 10 keynote and leadership sessions. It's a lot of information. We know it can be complex, so that's why we're here to break down those key takeaways and highlights each week of what you need to know. I'll be joined by a different Eagle Dream expert in our reInvent Roundup episodes, and today I'm here with Justin Guzzi of Eagle Dream Technologies to talk about Andy Jassy's keynote this morning. What a great keynote to kickstart yeah. the week. It was awesome. Yeah. Awesome. And so, Justin, you're a reInvent veteran. How many reInvents have you attended in the past? This will be my fourth reInvent, uh, my first virtual reInvent, so different but really cool. Yeah. Awesome. And as an AWS ambassador, love the insight you're going to bring to the table. I know there's a lot of information unpacked that we heard about today. Day, over three hours of content. Yeah. So let's kind of get right into it. One of the first announcements I want to talk about that was announced last night, Monday night, is the availability of Amazon EC2 Mac instances. What impact does this have on developers that are building Apple apps on AWS? Yeah, yeah. so this one I thought was really interesting, caught us by surprise. Um, so they're actually implementing basically Mac minis um, that they're tying into their Nitro hypervisor systems, which run EC2 infrastructure, um, and providing that as a dedicated instance to anybody that really wants to have access to Mac OS in the cloud. Um, so we're really not sure how they did it. Um, some type of magic under the hood, but it's really cool. Um, but I know that there's been a lot of customers looking to uh, leverage Mac in the cloud uh, as they develop applications. So I think it's going to be really interesting to see how it, um, you know, how it develops going forward too. Yeah, such a game changer. And oh, yeah. leave it to AWS to kickstart the week like this. Definitely. Awesome. And so today with Andy's keynote, I noticed a few common categories. So I thought today we would break up those categories and you tell us if there's a specific highlight or announcement that you're most excited about. So the first category I want to get your input on is disk and compute performance. What are you most excited about that was announced today that you're looking forward to related to disk and compute performance? Yep. So um, a couple that come off the top of my head, um, GP3 volumes. Uh, it's a new type of Elastic uh, Block Store volume that they're offering. Um, again, comes at a higher uh, higher performance, uh, lower price point. Um, so you're seeing probably about uh, four times the performance over previous generations of GP2 volumes. Um, in addition to that, uh, the IO2 Block Express uh, type of volume. Um, it's it's a high performance type of disk essentially um, that you can now leverage with EC2. Um, so rather than taking multiple EBS volumes and putting them together in a RAID array and striping them and doing all of that yourself, um, AWS gives that to you right out of the gate. So I thought those were a couple interesting um, storage announcements today around those, those few. Yeah, that's awesome. And I also saw that cost was a key theme as well related to this, making sure that these services are available at a lower cost, mm -hmm more cost-effective rate, mm -hmm. so glad to see that you saw that as well. Yeah. And serverless and containers. There's a lot, Andy, mentioned around serverless and containers. What do you think is really going to have an impact in regards to serverless and containers next year? Um, so uh, one of the announcements today um, was, a, was a service called ECS Anywhere and EKS Anywhere. Um, so for those that are not familiar, ECS, EKS um, are the platforms that AWS offers for running containers in the cloud. Um, so now, rather than just running your containers on the ECS or EKS service, um, you can actually run them in your data center. So that's pretty cool. Um, I could see some potential use cases for that. Um, in addition to that, um, Another one that I thought stood out was a service called Proton. Um, and this is where uh, Amazon seems to step in and really take away that heavy lifting for developers and um, those that are using the platform. So the ability to manage microservices at scale, um, any, any business that leverages microservices using serverless architectures uh, knows that it can get out of hand pretty quick. Uh, especially when you're you know, deploying lots and lots of applications. Uh, Proton kind of steps in and simplifies that process and the workflows around deploying service applications. Um, so now your teams can focus on the more important things rather than having to you know, manage all of these, these different components and pieces of infrastructure to run your serverless applications and mm -hmm. microservices. So a really great service. I think it's going to be beneficial for a lot of our customers as well. And really focus on the customer experience. Definitely. That's yeah. great. 
great. Another component that Andy spent a lot of time on is database and data lakes. A lot of exciting things in that space. Yeah. And I know Andy spent some time discussing how much data AWS customers are using and how that is growing rapidly. And I think one specific point you mentioned is more data is created every hour today than an entire year 20 years ago. So what are you excited about in the realm of data and database that yeah. was discussed? Yeah, so um, there was a common theme around database, um, particularly around proprietary database engines um, and licensed software. Um, and AWS has been pushing it for a long time, but I think you know at this reinvent, you're starting to really see the move forward towards open source. Um, so you know customers that are using proprietary databases and software, um, paying a lot for licenses for things like Microsoft SQL Server, um, you know. The, the push is going towards that open source, uh, much more scalable type of database technology um, using things like um, Aurora, for example. Mm -hmm. So, um, f for example, um, Aurora Serverless um, is one of their offerings. So there's Aurora and Aurora, Aurora Serverless. Um, Traditionally, you know, they had a, a, a Aurora Serverless version one, um, which was great. It's and it's still a great service for uh, customers that are looking for that scalability, uh, that pay-as-you-go type of service. Mm -hmm. um, with uh, Serverless V2, um, you still get that that great scalability and low cost, but even faster now. So you don't have to wait for that Aurora server uh, serverless cluster to scale up. It does it within milliseconds. Takes it to the next level. Yeah, definitely. Um, so I think that's a huge benefit for customers looking for that, again, that pay-as-you-go type of model. Um, you know, along the lines of moving more towards open source, uh, there's a service called Babelfish that they announced. Really interesting name. Love the name. Yeah, love it too. Um, but um, this was really cool because it's helping customers that, again, are using proprietary type of databases like Microsoft SQL Server, for example, um, and using a translation layer in between so that they can leverage Amazon Aurora. So this, in particular, uses uh, allows customers to use uh, Aurora Postgres. Um, so this will automatically translate it um, when the applications are talking to the database. Um, it's 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 doing that for you. Um, and this is kind of that, that first step in the direction of going towards uh, an open source type of database technology. Having some more freedom. Yes, yeah, again, that database freedom, um, you know, that's what Amazon's push is, getting people more towards open source. Scalability, flexibility, low cost. Awesome, great. Another bucket to kind of wrap things up, which I know is a super hot topic for so many people, is artificial intelligence and machine learning. And one new thing this year is they have a specific keynote dedicated to machine learning next week. I can't wait. But Andy gave us a couple sneak peek of those announcements. Mm -hmm. And I really want to hear your thoughts around Connect. There's a lot mm -hmm. of really exciting oh, yeah. things coming with Connect. Yeah. Yeah, so um, you know, Connect is the uh, essentially contact center in the cloud for for those that aren't aware. Um, there's some really interesting services that where they're tying in AI and ML um, to really improve the customer experience. Um, so, for example, Connect Wisdom uh, is one service that has come out for Connect, um, and that uh, is really interesting in how um, it's able to analyze um, speech. So, for example, if um, somebody is calling technical support or having an issue with something, um, it can pick up the the speech of that person um, and then uh, bring up relevant support articles for the tech support person on the other end. Uh, so for example, like, you know, if you know, they say, oh, my box was damaged during shipping, um, it will analyze that and then bring up articles for the tech support person to how to remediate that issue. Um, so really interesting way of using AIML, again, for the customer experience. Super relevant this yeah, year. Definitely, especially around this time of season, you know, when yes. there's lots of calls coming in, I'm sure, for, you know, issues during shipping or whatever is going on. So um, uh, another one I thought was interesting was the real-time contact lens. Mm -hmm. um, so providing uh, the ability to, to analyze in real-time the customer experience, you know, you know what's that call like? What's what? What is the the temperature of that call? Is the person angry? You know, are they happy? Um, previously, you know, they were able to uh, take that information and uh, analyze the audio to see what that experience was like after the fact. Now, with uh, real time real, insight, real time now. connect, uh, real time contact lens, it's all in real time. So That's again, awesome. a, a huge improvement on an already existing service. That's great. And all about improving the customer experience yes. and helping AWS customers improve yeah. the experience for their own customers. 
That's awesome. Anything else I IoT related? Um, yeah, there's a few announcements, uh, IoT industrial, um, so uh, Amazon Monitron uh, and Lookout, uh, which are focused around uh, predictive maintenance for um, things, for example, like um, equipment in a factory, um, you know, to be able to ingest information on IoT devices uh, to help customers, you know, be proactive um, as it relates to maybe um, you know, any issues that might be happening at any given point in time with equipment. Um, another one, too, uh, along the same lines of IoT uh, was uh, Amazon Panorama, well, which is the ability to um, take video data um, and analyze it, uh, you know, potentially in real Very time. Cool. Yeah. So, you know, whether that maybe that's surveillance data or camera data that's part of a machine that's, um, you know, analyzing uh, information about, uh, you know, anything during the manufacturing process, for example, to be able to pull that data and do something with it. So some some really interesting advancements in the industrial space. Awesome. Yeah. No, super exciting. Yeah. And just before we wrap things up, um, what do you see as a common theme from Andy's talk today? And I could see this being something carried through for the rest of reInvent next two weeks. Mm -hmm. um, what's a common theme that you saw this morning? Uh, definitely the theme of abstraction, right? So making the experience um, easier for the customers, right? Again, taking away that heavy lifting of managing infrastructure, managing processes, uh, and doing that for the customers. So, um, you know, for Proton for, is a great example of that, right? Is for serverless and microservices and managing all of that, that workflow process you know, Amazon is, is now taking care of that for you. Um, another one to uh, DevOps Guru, for example, using anomaly detection to help you detect issues maybe with infrastructure applications um, before it actually becomes a problem. So uh, you, now you don't have to go through that process of setting up alerts and alarms and all of these different things and these, uh, you know, uh, these monitoring systems, you know, Amazon's kind of doing that for you based upon the industry knowledge that they have over, you know, uh, over the decade. So Helping you be more proactive exactly. in what you're doing. Right. And the ability to not only tell you that there's potentially a problem, but to give you recommendations on how to remediate that issue. So again, taking away that heavy lifting so that teams can focus on what's most important to them um, and really, you know, come, really be ahead in the game, right? Yeah. It's all about go to market um, and you know, how, how fast you can get your teams to continuously develop and improve. Yeah, and innovate. Yeah. That's awesome. Justin, thank you so much. Thanks. I know this is so much information. Our goal the next few weeks is just to break down those announcements for you. What are those highlights? What are those takeaways? So tune back in. We'll be here every week. You can follow us on social. We'll be posting all the updates there at Eagle Dream Technologies on LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Also, if you want to chat through some of these announcements we discussed today, Justin is available. I know he'll be on Twitter, LinkedIn, yep. giving all the updates throughout the next few weeks. And we'll see you for our next reInvent Roundup episode. If you miss it, you can always tune in afterwards at eagledream.com slash on demand. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks. Thanks.